Thank you for watching Rage Gaming YouTube channel. Welcome into the channel. Today I will be going over how to use the Daisy Editor. There's a lot that you can do with the editor, so I might miss some things or believe it or not. I might be wrong about one tool in there only, and that's the toggle objects are clickable. Since I haven't gotten it to work for me. I mean, I'm only human using an AI text to speech app. Let's begin. To start things off, you will need to open up the Daisy launcher. Once you have your launcher open, click on the mods button. Then click this unload all button. This will remove any mods from coming onto the editor unless you add them back. Now type editor. You have to have editor on here, otherwise you won't ever make it into the editor, which means you have to be subscribed to the mod. No need to install on your server though. That will make it so all the players join Daisy Editor. Click this box. Some mods have dependencies and you will have to click this load selected mods. Then you will add any other mods you want to be able to use while in the editor. I have to add a few mods, then we will continue. Okay, make sure that if you're using a mod for your map, that you add the map mod. If not, you will only be able to use Chaneris, Livonia, or Sockle. Now that it has all the mods that I want to use while in the editor, you will just press play. Then you have to wait for it to load up. As soon as it loads up, it should look like this. If you're using a map mod, then you might have to scroll to find the map you are using. After you find your map, you can click the little load button to go right in on a fresh edit save, or you can click the folder to continue on a pre-existing editor save. Click close on the change log. Sometimes, depending on the map, your camera might be in the water. Just click M on your keyboard for map. Hold right click and drag to move the map. Scroll up and down to zoom in and out. If you're unable to see parts of the map, you may need to temporarily close the search list and or the placements and deletions. Like that, find a spot you want to build in. This spot looks good for this tutorial. Click the scroll wheel on your mouse in the spot you want your camera at. It will move your camera's marker blip. Then press M on your keyboard again to go back to your camera. Now you can hold right click to look around or press the space bar to go into free look no clip. Use WASD to move your camera and Q and Z to raise or lower your camera. If you can see your cursor, then you are in regular no clip. Don't forget you can switch back and forth by pressing spacebar. No clip means you can move your cursor without moving your camera unless you hold right click on your mouse. Another meaning of no clip is that you can fly through objects. While in regular no clip, you can see your cursor. Free look no clip means you move as if you were flying through the air, looking around with your mouse and moving the camera still with WASD. Use the search bar to search for the item you want. If you place items that you can normally pick up in game, then players will be able to pick those items up and that item will spawn another one 
if it's missing at the next server restart in your server. So it's best to only place items that can't be picked up or held in the hands or able to be put into an inventory. There are prop items that look like they can be picked up but can't. You should use those. I know Expansion Bundle has a lot of props. Builder items are items that have BLDR in the name. You used to not be able to use them, but now you can. Up at the top under File, you have these handy little buttons. Starting over here on the left is this paper, which is to start a new edit. Shortcut for Start New being Left Control N. Paper with a right facing arrow is to open an already existing edit. Shortcut for Open Existing is Left Control O. This floppy disk is a save file button if you have already named this edit. If you haven't named this edit, then it might prompt you to name it before you can go in. Shortcut for floppy disk button being left control S. The floppy disk with the pen is save as for first time saves. Shortcut being left control, left shift S. This left facing circle arrow is undo. Shortcut being left control Z. The right facing circle arrow is to redo. Shortcut being left control Y. For example, if you've made edits or adjustments and use the undo button or the shortcut for undo, which is left control Z, clicking redo lets you bring back what was undone without starting over from scratch. Next are the scissors, which are used to cut an item if the item is selected. Shortcut being left control X. Cutting an item is like delete, but copies it to your clipboard. The double papers up here are copy an item or items. Shortcut being left control C. If you copy an item, then use paste it will paste the item you just copied. The paper in clipboard is paste. Shortcut being left control V. If you use paste, it will paste the last thing that was copied. This U shape is a magnet from magnet mode. Shortcut being left control 1. For example, Magnet mode can be used alongside collision mode to ensure objects are placed accurately without overlapping or misalignment. The arrow down with a line underneath is ground mode. Shortcut being left control 2. Ground mode is a feature that ensures objects are placed directly on the terrain or ground surface. When enabled, it automatically adjusts the position of objects to align with the ground level, making placement more accurate and realistic. Next is snapping mode. This represents the snap to grid or alignment feature. This tool helps objects align or snap together precisely, ensuring clean and organized placement in your designs. The flashlight will light up whatever item you have selected. Shortcut being left shift L. This little guy character is so you can control your player from whatever view you are at right now. Shortcut being left control home. See my guy right there? My camera doesn't move, but my character does. Click the little guy up here at the top to turn that off. Now that we are back at the top here, this little house button is supposed to make it so items can or can't be click after you place it. Its toggle objects are clickable. It doesn't for me. Never has worked for me. So I might be wrong on what it actually does. Both these dotted line shapes are how your highlight looks. Shortcut for box is I. Shortcut for circle is O. This lasso is also a way to highlight or unhighlight. Shortcut being P. Next is this little section over here. This doesn't really have a name as far as I know, but I call it item edit. What it is is a way to lock, unlock, delete, add, or place. You can also use it to place selected trees that are already in there with Latin names. It is pretty nice when you want to lock or unlock a large area. Also placing trees with this is like a dream. Let me show you. Look how nice that is. So much better than placing them one at a time. Now down over to the left over here is the lock button. Shortcut being L if you have an item selected already. If no item is selected and you press the lock, it will open up the item edit lock. If you have an item selected, you can lock it so the circle sector doesn't show up and you don't accidentally move or delete it. Next is the unlock button. Clicking on the unlock button will open up the item edit unlock circle. 
The trash can opens up the item edit delete circle. The key will unlock all items that are locked. Shortcut being left, control shift L. The little four-way arrows is to open up the translation mode. Shortcut being left control numpad one. This allows you to move an object in the direction of the arrow that you drag. Like this. Move it like this or like that to move in only that direction. The two arrows in a circle is rotation mode. Shortcut being left control numpad two. When an item is selected, you'll be able to rotate the item by dragging these lines. The four arrows extending away from each other is scaling mode. Shortcut being left control numpad three. If an item has been selected, you can click this to make the item increase in size or reduce the size of the item. You can make things bigger or smaller for all kinds of things. Walls, things for traders, whatever your imagination can come up with. This lightning button is pretty cool. Click it, then click anywhere in the editor and it will spawn a lightning and thunder flash like this. Super noise if you ask me. Now that we have gone through everything up here, we are almost done. Find something you want to place. After you place an item and the item is selected, you can use the mouse to move around the item. Only if you click the item circle, then drag. While the item is selected, you can press and hold left shift and drag your mouse to the left or right to spin or turn the item. Make sure you click right on the circle, then drag. Otherwise, it will unselect the item you have selected. If the item is still selected, you can press and hold left alt and left click right on the item circle, then drag up and down to raise or sync your item. If you have your item kind of where you want it, you can use your arrow keys to move it more precisely. While using your arrow keys, you can also press and hold left control and left or right arrow keys to turn your item. If you press the up or down arrow while using the arrow keys and left control, it will tilt your item. Tilting it this way is pretty difficult. While using your arrow keys, you can press and hold left shift to make the item you're using move faster. Left alt will slow down the item you're trying to move with the arrow keys for a much more precise placement. If you have an item selected, you can press left control and J to duplicate that item and how it is at the time of duplication. It's good when trying to build things that you want to stay the same level and be very close to the one you're duplicating from. If an item is selected, you can press C to copy it to clipboard without removing it. If you press Y, you will remove the editor HUD. If you put your cursor somewhere you want a character and press T, it will teleport your character there, like this. If your keyboard has a home button and you press home, it will let you go into your character's body and run around as if you were in the game. You can't die though, so you don't have to worry about your stats on your character. We'll go back out of our character by pressing home again. If an item is selected and you press H, it will hide the item, but it will still be placed where you put it, just invisible. If you want to show the item that you hid, you have to find the item over here. Click it and press left control and H. Or right click this and press show. Pressing tab will remove both these side panels. Tab again will put them back. Now that you know what all the buttons do that you see and you know all the shortcuts, you can go do some building. Just so you know, I will add all the shortcuts in the description. After you get done building, make sure you save it. The last thing you want or need is to do a ton of work and forget to save just to have to go back and start fresh. When you save in the Daisy editor, it normally sends it to your documents. So back out of this all the way or just hit the Windows button. Then head to your File Explorer folder at the bottom of your screen. Go to your C drive, then go to Documents, then to Day Z, then to Editor. This is where all your saved editor files go. These are DZ files. You will need to add your DZ into your editor folder on your service files.
They go under your MP missions folder, then the map mission that you're using and in an editor files folder like this. If you have them in here like this and you have the mod, Daisy editor loader installed on your server, then the stuff will spawn in your server. There you go. We have finished. Once again, I will make sure to add all these shortcuts in a list in the description. Also, you can find the links to everything I use, all the way down to the website that I use for the text to speech. Have fun building with your newfound knowledge. Thank you for watching Rage YouTube channel. Like and subscribe so you'll be notified when I post videos. P.S. Don't worry, I know there are still some Daisy Editor things I didn't go over. I will be going over the rest of the editor tools and tricks in an upcoming video. Named using Daisy Editor Part 2. Only those that subscribe will know right when I upload it.